Integral Calculus Volumes of Revolution. We're going to take a section of a curve, revolve it, rotate it around the x-axis and we can use the definite integral to find the volume of the solid formed. And that volume from A to B is going to be pi times the integral from A to B of the square of f of x dx. Or using xy notation, pi times the integral of y squared dx. Let's have a look at an example. So we're going to take the graph of y equals x squared from x equals 0 to x equals 2 and we're going to rotate it around the x-axis. It gives us virtually a cone but this concave upside, so a curved side, otherwise it would be a cone. So we're going to take the integral from 0 to 2 of y squared, so it's x squared squared dx which gives me the integral pi times the integral from 0 to 2 of x to the 4 dx. Standard integral becomes x to the 5 over 5. Substitute 2, subtract, substitute 0. And that works out as 32 pi over 5. Let's illustrate the uses of calculus, integral calculus, by showing that we can actually derive the formula for the volume of a sphere. There's the actual volume of a sphere of radius r, 4 thirds pi r cubed. Let's now confirm this. If we take this semicircle, y equals the positive square root of r squared minus x squared, from negative r to r and we rotate it about the x-axis we form a sphere a ball shape so we use the formula pi integral a to b y squared dx so we get to square that square root which means the square root drops away and this is the standard integral now. R squared we treat as a constant. It's as if it was just a number there. Which means we'll end up with R squared x. Minus and then x cubed over 3 from negative R to R. Substitute R, subtract, substitute negative R. And doing the algebra we end up with 4 thirds pi r cubed. Isn't science wonderful? Now this method can be used to determine a number of different volume formulae. Let's take it a step further and rotate a section between two graphs. So there is y equals 2x squared and there is y equals x plus 1. Now if we take this shaded section between the two graphs, which is the straight line above and the parabola below, the area between formed by subtracting the parabola integral from the straight line integral, and we go to rotate it around the x-axis to form a bowl. interesting inside shape but it's still a ball so now first thing we need to do is find that point of intersection so we equate 2x squared to x plus 1 seeing that they're both equal to y and if we solve we actually get x equal to negative half or 1 
Negative half because the parabola continues on this side and intersects with a straight line on the left of the y-axis, but we're only interested in the positive values. The graph is a bit misleading because it actually looks as if it, in, it intersects a bit before 1, but that's what happens because graphs aren't necessarily drawn to scale in examination papers. Now we're going to find the integral. from neg do naught to 1 of x plus 1 all squared, that's the y squared for that graph, and from it we're going to subtract pi times the integral from naught to 1 of this graph squared. Now being both being integral from 0 to 1, we can combine them into a single integral. Note there, we have pi times integral 0 to 1 minus pi times integral 0 to 1. So instead we can say pi times integral 0 to 1, the first function minus the second function. Simplifying. Standard integral. There we are. Substitute 1, subtract, substitute 0. And that gives us 23 pi divided by 15.